What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Canadian Silver Maple Leaf, more specifically, the 2022 Canadian Silver Maple Leaf. We're going to be answering a subscriber's question related to that, along with a list of other questions. But really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos. Get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club for giveaways, live streams, deal alerts, and a whole lot more. And of course, make sure to go and get your 12 free fractional shares by downloading Weeble and funding your account for one friend by the 15th, and they're going to give you all the way up to 100 free fractional shares for the referral. Everything will be linked in the description. So today is Sunday, August 7th, 2022. I'm filming this on August 1st, believe it or not, filming almost a week in advance, and it's clearly raining out here. Sitting there at a desk making videos is driving me up the wall, so I have to be outside making videos nowadays, and unfortunately I can't control the weather, and the show must go on. So here we go. It's Sunday. It's time for the Sunday Q&A. I have a list of questions right here that I want to run through, and some of these are actually pretty interesting. The first one we have here is coming from Pretzel Maker. Always like that name. And the question is, who here is still purchasing gold now? Good question. Thanks for asking. I personally cannot speak for absolutely everyone. I am not, though. Not at this time. Although, I don't want to say that I am not purchasing gold, even though I'm not currently purchasing gold. Only reason for that, the only reason I'm not getting gold at this time is because I'm just simply saving up for a larger piece of gold. That's all. If I take a step back to save up for something, I wouldn't really say that I'm not going after that thing. I'm just saving up for a bigger piece. Right now, the only pieces of gold I have are one gram gold bars or 10th ounce gold coins or quarter ounce gold coins. I don't have anything above those denominations. And as time has been going by, I still stand by my original belief, which is that fractional gold is much more convenient, much more practical. Sure, the premiums are a little bit higher, but I'm kind of okay with that because I view the slightly higher premiums on fractional gold as somewhat of a security expense, not a security feature, a security expense, just because, especially if you're ordering online or whatever the case may be, God forbid something gets lost in the mail or God forbid something gets stolen and then you have to go through that whole headache or that whole process of trying to figure out what went wrong or where it is or who got it or, or whatever. It's a whole lot less heartbreaking for a 10th ounce gold coin or something worth about $200 or a little bit less to get lost or stolen than for a one ounce gold coin or something worth $2,000 to get lost or stolen. So that's what I've always liked about fractional gold. And I've always said that if push comes to shove, if I ever need to part ways with any portion of my stack, if there's some type of financial emergency that I'm going through and I need to sell, I'd rather sell off a small portion than have to part ways with an entire troy ounce of gold. Maybe I just need a couple hundred dollars. That was always my belief, and that's still my belief. However, I've come to realize that fractional gold for smaller transactions does the same exact identical thing as silver of any denomination. So I'm starting to think to myself, I was like, well, why, why pay for that higher premium, that higher security expense, just for it being more practical to get rid of if I absolutely needed to? I wouldn't want to, but if I needed to, maybe I should just pay a lower premium for a larger piece of gold if I save up for it. And if, God forbid, something happens and I need to part ways with a portion of the stack, 
and I need to go for just, you know, small amount of currency worth silver. Why would I stack both metals for identical reasons? Anyway, that's kind of my thought on gold. That's kind of my way of going about it at this time. So it's kind of a weird answer to the question. No, I'm not currently stacking gold. And that's just because I'm stacking some cash while I save up for my next piece of gold. If you guys watching right now are still stacking gold, if you're still actively converting your dollars into gold, let me know in the comments and let us know what your next gold coin is likely going to be. Next question we have here is coming from George. And the question is, some people in the area want to know how do we bring Silver Surfer to life with this type of inflation? Good question, thanks for asking. Unfortunately, I have zero idea what the answer to that question even is. But while we're talking about inflation, again, as I'm filming the video, it's August 1st. So as I'm filming about a week and a half away from the next CPI report to be released for the month of July, we're gonna be getting that. But as this video comes out, we're probably only a couple days away. I think it's the 7th as I'm putting this video out and we, I don't remember the exact date, but it's, it's usually between the 10th and the 13th when the CPI report gets released. So by the time this video drops, we're probably only a couple days away from finding out what the next inflation report is going to read. According to the report, or the, the last report, according to it, inflation's at 9.1%. That's what it says. That's what it claims. So, all right, that's the number that I guess I'm going to go with. 9.1%. The highest in over 40 years. The month before was 8.6%. At the time, that was the highest in over 40 years. A couple months before that, or two months before that, inflation was 8.5%. And at that time, that's the highest in over 40 years. And, and we can go all the way back. We, we've been breaking, you know, 40-year highs pretty much this entire year so far. So, I don't really... There's not really a whole lot I can say about that. I've, I've shared my thoughts on inflation. I, I've, I've shared what I think of everything going on, so I don't really feel the need to reiterate those points. But at, at, at this stage of the game, I don't even think it's really worth complaining about anymore. I like to believe that inflation will come down, and I, I do believe that it will. I just think it's going to take a whole lot longer than what was originally expected. And, you know, I, I keep reminding myself that what I'm doing today through these tough times, what I'm doing today through these inflationary times, what I'm doing today through these probably recessionary times what I'm doing today is going to pay off big time in the long run see the way I see it inflation in 2022 probably isn't even going to it's just going to be a distant memory by the time we get to 2032 or 2042 I hope at least. I hope this isn't a multi-decade long painful process. And, and it won't be. It will get better. It's going to get worse before it gets better, but it will get better. And everything that I'm doing today, despite how difficult these times are, like, you, you really think it's easy for someone like me who's just getting started. I'm just getting started. I haven't even scratched the surface yet when it comes to stacking, when it comes to investing, when it comes to business, when it comes to anything that I want to do. I'm just now beginning to get my foot in the door. I've been stacking silver and gold for almost five years at this point. This December will be five years. I've been investing for a little over two. I've been in, I've been in business, well, different types of businesses actually, for five to ten years depending on what business you're, we're actually really like two to ten years depending on which one you're looking at i'm just getting started 
You really think I enjoy everything skyrocketing in price? Causing me to spend more currency every time I go to the grocery store? Spend more currency every time I go to the gas station? Spend more currency literally everywhere I go? Which inadvertently prevents me from being able to stack as much as I want or invest as much as I want or, or do the things that I know I need to be doing right now. It's a roadblock. It's a speed bump. It's an inconvenience. It's friction. But guess what? Even though I'm not doing as much as I would ideally like to be doing right now, I know for an absolute fact that I'm doing far more than the average person out there. You want to know what the average person is doing right now while I'm recording a video about personal finance and while you're listening to a video about personal finance, I'm talking about it, you're listening to it, we're doing something to get ahead. You know, this isn't just like, this isn't just like a cartoon, this is, you know, something that we're doing to hopefully propel ourselves forward, not back. So whether you're talking about personal finance or listening to somebody else talk about personal finance, you're already taking steps in the right direction. We're not the average person. We are not the 99%. We are not what like typical people are doing right now. You wanna know what the average typical person is doing right here, right now? They're probably watching Netflix. They probably have their hand in a, in a family-sized bag of Doritos that they're not sharing with their family. They're probably getting nothing done they're probably showing up to work late. They're probably trying to figure out ways to leave work early. They're not investing. They're not stacking. They're not running a business. They're not building new skills. They're not networking. They're not doing anything. We, on the other hand, and I don't mean to sound pretentious over here, like, oh, we're so much better. That's not what I'm saying. We just have different priorities. And I believe that our priorities will pay off big time later down the road. Next question we have here is coming from, let me get it, Spanish Flea. Interesting name. And the question is, and your point being, <laughs> this was a question left on a video that I posted, a video that I believe was only about maybe 30 seconds long. And it was titled, Over 40% of Warren Buffett's net worth is in Apple stock. And the 30 second clip was me explaining just that. So if you wanna know what my point is when I say that over 40% of Warren Buffett's net worth is in Apple stock, my point is that 40% of Warren Buffett's net worth is in Apple stock. The point is the title of the video. That's what I wanted that video to be about. I thought that that was interesting, so that's what I wanted to document, and that's what I wanted to report on. I thought it was pretty cool. I think it's 42 point something percent. That's a, that's a lot. And especially if we're talking about Warren Buffett, you know, 40% of our net worth, you know, what, what's that? You know, maybe a couple thousand dollars <laughs> or something like that. Maybe, maybe, maybe $10,000 or, or something like that. A lot of us do not have multiple, multiple, multiple billions of dollars, tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars in all these different asset classes, real estate, stocks, precious metals. I mean, if you have over a billion dollars in precious metals and you're watching my video right now, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. But that was my only point. I thought that, that was pretty interesting and that's what I wanted to make a video about. Similar to how if I wanted to make a video about, I don't know, Mercury Dimes, and I titled it something along the lines of Mercury Dimes, that, that's just what, that's what my point would be. 99% of the time, you don't even need to watch my videos. You can get a very, 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 very quick summary of the entire video just by reading the title. 99% of the time, I don't do those weird things. You can just look at the look at the thing. Look at the title. It tells you almost everything you need to know. The video is just to explain it. But anyway, while we're on the topic of Apple stock or stocks in general, 
I wanted to take a quick second to remind everybody to make sure and go and get your free up to 12 fractional shares by downloading Weeble and funding your account. You can deposit any amount, as little as you want. It could be as little as a penny and it still works, it still counts. You still get your free fractional shares. And these can be fractional shares of Ford, Coca-Cola, I would assume probably Apple, since we're talking about Apple or just stocks in general. Man, there are deer everywhere. I didn't even realize. So just by downloading the app and funding your account with as little as a penny, you can get up to 12 free random fractional shares just for doing so. And what's even cooler than that is if you refer one friend to the app by the 15th, they're going to give you a spin on the Weeble wheel, which guarantees you at least 15 fractional shares. And you can win all the way up to 100 free fractional shares. If you refer one friend to the app by the 15th, that's what you get. And guess what? You can refer up to 10 people by the 15th. So you have the opportunity of winning all the way up to 1,000 free fractional shares of some of the biggest, baddest, best behemoth companies on the planet. And if you don't want the stocks, just go and get them anyway. They're free. Sell them. Congratulations. Now you have the cash to go and get you some silver and gold if that's what you want. We will link in the description. Next question we have here is coming from... Mikey D Y D S S two, and the question is: Have y'all subscribed to the backup channel yet, or do you just hate money? Good question. Thanks for asking. For those of you who do not know, I have two YouTube channels, and I'll make this quick because I want to get onto the maple leaves. I have two YouTube channels. This one that I post full-length videos to on a daily basis, but I have a second channel as well. And if you're into prepping or stacking, you should understand the importance of having a backup source of really anything. If God forbid something happens to this YouTube channel, I can pick up where I left off over there and I'll have a way to communicate with everybody. But I won't if you're not subscribed. I don't know how I have 19,000 subscribers over here and only like 2,000 over there and I talk about it all the time. Please subscribe to that second channel. It'll be linked in the description. I post short videos every single week over there. And like I said, it's a backup channel for a reason. Next question is the final question of the, I want to say night, but it's like six o'clock in the morning. Final question of the morning is coming from Daniel. And the question is, what's your thoughts on the 2022 Canadian maple? Good question. Thanks for asking. Unfortunately, I do not have any 2022 maple leaves in silver or gold. I have a lot of maple leaves. None from the current year that we are in though. I have 2019s. I have 2016s. I think this one is a, this is a 2009. This is just the one that I am willing to carry around with me when I'm filming videos outdoors. I have maple leaves from all different years. I have milk spotted maple leaves. I have uncirculated pristine condition maple leaves. I have the 25th anniversary maple leaf. I have the 30th anniversary maple leaf. I'm looking forward to soon being able to get the 35th anniversary maple leaf. I have fractional gold maple leaves. I got a lot of maple leaves. I love maple leaves, but if you're asking me specifically about the 2022 maple leaf, my thoughts on the 2022s are no different than my thoughts on the 2021s or, or, or any year back. Especially 2018 moving forward because that's when the Canadian Mint changed up their minting process and greatly reduced and hopefully fully prevent milk spots. I'm a big fan of the maple leaf. I've always been. I thought it was a beautiful coin, at least on one side, the maple leaf side, the other side. Eh, we don't like to talk about that side. We'll leave that face down. But I've always been a big fan of the maple leaf. Number one, because I think it's a beautiful looking coin. Aesthetically, I just love the way that it looks. 
really anything that involves an animal or nature or anything, I'm just naturally drawn to. I like the way that it looks. But two, and more importantly, it is one of the most recognizable, pure silver, one troy ounce coins on the planet. It's right up there with the American Silver Eagle. It's right up there with the Mexican Libertad. It's right up there with the Britannia or the Philharmonic or the Krugerrand. It's up there. And in the past, I've gone through like my own personal ranking system where I've ranked different coins. And it might sound a little bit ridiculous, but I, I'm obviously I would say the Silver Eagle is ranked number one. But when it comes to being ranked number two, I think there are several coins that are all tied for second place. And the Canadian Maple Leaf is absolutely one of them. It, it's just, it's an incredible coin. It's four nines fine, pure silver. It's recognizable no matter where you go. It's respected, it's sought after, it's desired, it's in demand. And guess what? Nowadays, it's carrying a much lower premium than the American Silver Eagle, which is one of the reasons I had a ranking system in the first place. If all of a sudden, what I consider to be number one becomes out of reach, premiums are just too high for absolutely no reason. Well, the demand is high, but as somebody that's stacking for weight, it doesn't really matter what the coin rounder bar is or what it looks like or whatever. I would just prefer it to be recognizable. So with that being the case, all of a sudden, number one is out of reach. Number one, Silver Eagle, I can't get them anymore. The premiums are just too high. It doesn't make sense for me to convert my dollars into that particular piece of silver. When I can get the same amount of silver with the same level of purity, or in the Maple Leafs case, an even higher level of purity for several dollars less per troy ounce. So when ranking number one becomes out of reach, just move on down to ranking number two. If you're stacking for weight, there really is no need for a ranking system anyway. When it's all melted down, a silver eagle is not a silver eagle. It's just a troy ounce of silver. A maple leaf is just a troy ounce of silver. A buffalo round is just a troy ounce of silver. A privately minted poured silver bar is just a troy ounce of silver. It doesn't matter. No one cares. When silver's melted down, it's just silver. So if you're stacking for weight, that's probably the way you're looking at it. That's probably your, your perspective. That's definitely my perspective. And as of lately, I've been more fixated on 90% anyway for like the last two years. But when it comes to pure silver, if I had to start stacking pure silver one troy ounce coins again, which I do from time to time, but I don't really pay too close attention to it. If I had to, I would probably be going for the Maple Leaf. That would probably be first in line that I would be going after for as long as I can. Now, don't get me wrong. I would pick up some Philharmonics and Britannias and whatnot as well. But after the Silver Eagle, I would say my go-to would probably have to be the Maple Leaf. And that's how it's always been, by the way. When I first started stacking, I was all in on generic silver rounds, and after a couple months, I moved on over to pure silver coins, making the Silver Eagle the base of my stack, the foundation of my stack. <laughs> and the Maple Leaf was always second in command. I always made sure to pick up a couple of Maple Leafs on the side, even if I would just pick up a handful of, you know, scratched up, tarnished, discolored, cull Maple Leafs which reduced the premiums even more. And back then, premiums barely even existed anyway. So it wouldn't make the biggest difference. But I remember one time I placed an order online and I saved up a little bit of cash and I basically wiped the shelves of this one particular website's cull maple leaves because back then nobody was paying attention to cull maples. I wiped the shelf. I, I made a whole video about that too. I did a whole unboxing, just dumped out a pile of milk-spotted, scratched-up, discolored maple leaves because I saw an opportunity to get some. 
at a discounted price, being that they weren't in pristine condition. And I think they were on sale on top of that too. I think the website was like 15% off or, or off the premium of a premium that was already low to begin with. Back when spot price was only $13, $14. So I made out quite well that day. But anyway though, those are just some of my thoughts. I wanna know yours, head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. If you have any questions for me, ask away. If you wanna extend on any of my answers, you're more than welcome to do so down in the comments. If you guys like today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Go and get yourself some, oh, you know what? I forgot. I'm showing off the pictures. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about editing. Subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Go and get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. Got t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, coffee mugs, and a bunch of different designs. A lot of the products are helping us raise some funds and awareness for different charity organizations, by the way. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club, which is where I do giveaways every single month live streams multiple times a week, deal alerts on silver and gold almost every single day. You can watch all of my videos early and commercial free and every Saturday morning I post a brand new vlog and there are a ton of other perks as well. VIP club link in the description. I guarantee you it's worth it. And of course, last but certainly not least, make sure to go and get your up to 12 free fractional shares by downloading Weeble and funding your account. You can deposit any amount, even as little as a penny. It still works, it still counts. You still get your up to 12 free random fractional shares. And if you refer a friend to the app by August 15th, you have one week left. Weeble's gonna give you all the way up to 100 free fractional shares with a minimum of 15 free fractional shares. And you can do this 10 times, by the way, if you just click that little invite button, send it to one or two or five or 10 people that you know, it's quite literally that simple. Weeble's gonna give you however many spins as referrals you made, and you're gonna get at least 15 or up to 100 free fractional shares per referral. Don't pass up on an opportunity. Weeble link in the description. Time is running out. If you don't want the stocks, go and get them anyway. They're free. Congratulations. Now you have the cash to go and get you some silver and gold if that's what you want. We will link in the description. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. When it comes to any of the questions that were asked and that I answered, if there's anything that, if you would like to answer them your way, or if there's anything that you'd want to extend on, you're more than welcome to do so down in the comments. And of course, if you have any questions for me, Head on down to the comments and ask away. Maybe you'll be featured in the next Q&A video. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.